I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Good evening and welcome to Single Shot at Manhattan Neighborhood Network at Roundtable. Tonight we will be discussing the uh, diversity of uh, artistic medias and uh, working with digital photography, with classical photography. And uh, to discuss it, we invited brilliant artist, Lisa Dubois, who excelled in many uh, forms, genres and medias of uh, visual art, uh, ranging from uh, digital media to classical uh, Associated Press style photography, who uh, was working with photojournalism, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, oil paintings, and who really have the perspective as broad as uh, a true Renaissance personality can get. Hello, Lisa, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. So, uh, just uh, to get us started, can we uh, see what uh, is your understanding of how the art photography, digital art, uh, and uh, photojournalism are related to each other, just? Okay, well, um, all art is connected. All f you know, everything is connected. However, you have art, you have photography, you have digital photography, um, digital art. So with photography, you're using a SLL camera. You're photographing and with art you're using obviously paint etc or mixed media um, digital art is can be photo art and it can also be computer art mm -hmm. we've we've advanced so far in technology that you could make anything out of nothing practically mm -hmm. with the help of Photoshop and other programs absolutely yes so for me there's a very thin line between art and photography mm -hmm. for me um, and that's because I can transform a photograph into a piece of art and it really depends on what photograph I'm doing that with because not every photograph speaks to that um, it'll say something to me and then I will begin to create it and the reason why I like doing that is because with that I can take reality and create um, surre surreal, something surreal for myself. Definitely I existed. can change things to the way that I see them. Mm -hmm. I can fantasize and just let my imagination go. So that's why I enjoy doing photo art, mm -hmm. but I love photography as well. well. It's a very interesting perspective, but it doesn't mean that uh, you excluding artistic photography from the concept of art per se, right? Oh, not at all. Um, Artistic photography, I would call photo art. You know, you could call it photo art or you can call it digital art. Artistic photography can be done in many different ways. One of the ways that I do it is I'll take a photograph and I will manipulate it on the computer. I will, I have my own process, but then I'll, I'll actually have it printed on canvas and then I will completely paint over that. So it becomes like an original painting because no two are exactly alike. Oh. It's, it's really interesting uh, view of it, and now uh, just for my curiosity, you know that there is this uh, new trend in uh, painting when uh, uh, a photo actually is printed and then realistically recreated with paints on top of this uh, print on canvas. Where would you place that? Well, it's that's kind of reverse. Oh, you mean where would you place it in the in the realm? Okay, yeah. so that would become um, it can become mixed. To some degree, it could be almost a mixed media because mm -hmm. you're using several different things. Mm -hmm. you use a can you're using the camera first, the canvas, print yeah. the printing process, and then you're actually painting over it. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, when you do something like that, it becomes an original. It, be it becomes, it's not the photograph anymore. 
So no, now it's yeah. an original. Even though they call it super realism because it's actually very close to the original photo. Mm -hmm. So it's And there's so many different types of photo art that you can do. There's unlimited programs that give you so many different ways. You can actually take a photograph and you can get a brush on the computer and mm -hmm. actually repaint the whole photograph, change it into a, a house if you want. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's unlimited what you can do now. Um, as opposed to the traditional film photography that people did many years ago, and some people are still doing it now, Absolutely. with film photography, you're using a camera and you're using film. Every one of those negatives, when they're printed in the darkroom, they become a much more valuable print, especially if they were done back when the picture was taken, like in mm -hmm. the 80s. Very few photographers that I do know some that use film, but very few use it, and because it's very long process. I personally love the digital age. I love it because I'm able to do in one day what may have taken me, you know, a very long time to do with limited you know, tools. Now we have unlimited tools. Well, uh, it's exactly my perspective on it, even though I personally only worked in uh, digital part of photography, but I'm very well aware of uh, how the process works, and I'm getting scared when I'm actually imagining that I would have to deal with it, even though part of uh, what was done in analog age, and uh, I do believe you mentioned at some point that uh, you actually was working with uh, retouching the photos and uh, then working on the photos when they're right. already printed. Was, uh, you mean years ago? Yeah, when I started out in photography, um, I had this inside of me that I had to always transform for some reason. I, I always loved transforming mm -hmm. my work. And so when I was working in the darkroom, I used to superimpose two negatives together many different little tricks that you can do in the darkroom. And then I would take the image out and I actually would paint over them. They had these paints called Marshall paints. Anybody who did that knows about it. Mm -hmm. And you would literally paint just like the old hand colored photos. Uh -huh. So I was already doing that. So when the ditch, you know, when Photoshop came out, I mean, you know, and people, it was like a dream for me because I could just do it. Just quickly. A large toolbox for exactly what you were it's planning to do. It's unlimited toolbox. Oh, so uh, it's actually great uh, to see a guest who was working on expert level with film photography and who welcomed Digital Age uh, so enthusiastically. Most of uh, traditional photographers actually trying to frown upon uh, di Digital Age and uh, all this versatility. Oh. That actually is, I understand. That's, is that photo is a photo that I took on the street. And I, a lot of my photographs are taken on the street, my portraits, and mm -hmm. some I'm not, but it was taken on the street. But I, man I manipulated the photo to get that type of effect. I wanted to get rid of everything around it, just focus on his face. Wow, it uh, definitely was a brilliant result. Oh, and not amazing. But, uh, since we started to talk about portraiture, as I understand, uh, your interest in portraiture uh, is uh, prevailing, at least in photographic part of your art. You're interested in uh, showing personality through the portrait and mm -hmm. uh, working with this personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I understand, it was actually working with uh, people of, of the street, just like this gentleman we just seen, and uh, some uh, pretty famous and uh, pretty legendary in a way uh, personalities in uh, your journalistic career, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, um, how that was working? Um, oh, we're looking at these photos. <laughs> <laughs> this is a photo, this is a photo art. Huh? If you, the photo that was just shown mm -hmm. was actually used to create this photo. I see. Um, that one. Uh -huh. That that photo has the same people, more or less, in the photo, this one. Mm -hmm. So I took a traditional landscape scene, changed everything, um, just played around, moved different things, painted, you know, d did all, and got that effect, which is sort of like mm -hmm. a fantasy kind of landscape. It's indeed uh, extremely interesting, but uh, let me ask you this. It's actually a question that's becoming to be vital since uh, digital art and uh, 
photo art becoming uh, to be more accepted and better understood and uh, starting to join uh, the world of official art. Uh, where, where would you uh, draw the border between what is a photograph that was modified and what is not a photograph anymore? Well, I should emphasize the fact that there are a lot of museums and galleries that really want very little to do with manipulated photography. Mm -hmm. So although it's very big and everybody loves to do it, there's a whole lot of respect you know, and reverence for the traditional photography. Absolutely. So with me, I do make, like some, I'll look at a photo and I will decide that should always stay as a photo. It should never be manipulated mm -hmm. and I leave it alone. And I'll see something else and it sparks my imagination and then I go for it. I start playing with it. And what, I, what it originally looks like never looks like that towards the end. Wow. That's uh, definitely is very interesting and we'll be back after this quick pause to discuss uh, more about work uh, with uh, portraiture and uh, the actually there is a very important part of uh, Alright, we're back. So we was uh, starting to touch the subject of uh, the portraiture and as I understand it's uh, your favorite uh, part when it comes to both traditional photography and uh, mixed media. I love portraiture. And you were asking me about uh, the personality going into the photograph. Uh -huh. um, I agree, I, I believe strongly that the photographer's personality is injected directly into the photograph. And number one, the photographer has to decide what they're going to photograph. So there his personality is already coming into play. Absolutely. Um, a, photo a photographer who's doing like events, outside work, you have to also be quick. You have to um, be able to move around with photojournalism. Of course. And to be able to photograph really quick. Um, so definitely, there's no doubt about it, The personality of the photographer is in there because he's she or he is the is navigating the camera and deciding what to focus on so there's no way that the person's f personality is not totally injected into what they decide to shoot no, and how they how and also how they approach the subject because you could go out and say well I'm gonna go photograph this event another person may go out and say well you know what I'm just gonna focus on one specific aspect of this event to get like a story. So that's kind of like a part of the trick as well, to, to find a story within what's happening. So basically the individuality of photography and portraiture uh, 
according to what we believe is uh, based on editorial license on choices of place of a subject and the moment of uh, press and, and the another thing that's extremely important how do you relate to people that's al absolutely important of course not every photographer I know I've known photographers that sh only shoot from across the street because they don't want to interact with the person I'm one of them. <laughs> 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 but I think that's essential to kind it, it, it's essential to get over that what if you can't talk to the person because by speaking to the person you're able to open up a lot more a lot more and mm. you may be able to even get them to pose a particular way if that's what you're looking for but a person doesn't have to pose to get a great portrait you know of course absolutely but I do like I I have a tendency to try to look for some sort of real eye t eye contact with my photographs Oh, I actually noticed that you have it on uh, many fo photographs of yours, and uh, especially when you have photographs of uh, several people. I know that you have a huge and beautiful series of ethnic uh, subcultures. Ethnographic photography, yes. Yes. I do. Um, when it comes to ethnographic photography, I sometimes call it subculture photography, and that's because I have... I'm always interested in the unusual. I'm always interested in the, the bizarre, even. You know, so I look for things like that to photograph. Um, in New Orleans, it's everywhere, you know. And so I photographed a lot of the subculture in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And they are small groups of people. And you try to find out eth ethnographic photography in many ways is done in sometimes in a scientific way mm -hmm. where they're actually studying groups of people. Yeah. Subculture photography um, is similar, but you're, it's a little freer. You're not actually doc, you're not actually counting how many people are here or there, you know. You're, so I, I love, uh, spirituality is a subject that I like to photograph. Mm -hmm. I like to photograph people in trance. Um, I've done that through my photographs. Uh, like, uh, there are tributes to the ancestors mm -hmm. that are taking place in the summer. I go here in New York, so I go to those. And, mm -hmm. and they're extremely enlightening to just see and be a part of another culture that I actually am not technically involved in, mm -hmm. but I, there, there be, there's like a connection, because like a lot of these people are extremely emotional when it's happening, so you can't help but feel that energy happening between you and what you're around. Oh, definitely uh, visible in your photographs that you are uh, relating to all those uh, beautiful uh, rituals and the whole uh, culture you're photographing because uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. look foreign. Oh, yeah, this I believe is the uh, Mardi Gras, mm -hmm, right? But those are those. That's a tribe of Mardi Gras Indians, and it's like a uh, hundred years old, and they are out during Mardi Gras, but not everybody sees them. You have to know where to go. To, to, to see, really, it's almost like a secret. It's a secret. It's, a, it's like a secret. You have to find where they go. You have to know people that know where they are so that you can get them and photograph them. So during Mardi Gras, I'm very rarely at the traditional huge parades. I'm imagine. going to the subculture parades, the baby dolls, the skull and bones, the Mardi Gras Indians. That's just the name of a few of the very well-known uh, subcultures. Oh, that's the whole new angle on Mardi Gras, besides mm -hmm. the new angle on photography. So, uh, you're oh. oh, and this I believe is This India, would right? come under the category of ethnographic photography. Absolutely. This is a group yeah. of many uh, women in Varanasi, and they are actually in water, and they stayed in water all night long. And that is for a blessing for their husbands. So it's a spiritual subculture, ethnographic, type of uh, photography. So, uh, uh, how is it related to uh, your uh, painting and mixed media art? Well, I have taken some of those images and I've transformed them into paintings. Mm -hmm. um, that work, that specific work, um, a lot of the Mardi Gras images I have transformed. I think we, some of them have passed through. Uh -huh. Um, but again, I go back to the fact that I'll look at a photograph and I will decide I don't want to touch this because it's perfect the way it is or it's just the way I want it. 
And sometimes you shouldn't because you may alter it in a in a way it doesn't need to. But that's for the photographer to decide what to which to use, which mm -hmm. ones. I I feel like I look at a picture. I by looking at it, I'll know whether it's something that I want to. So it's not uh, any logical uh, reasons. Oh, it's just the way you feel about it. None at all. You have to feel it. In so you have to look at the image and say. I mean, some some of my images are so packed with information. Some of my photojournalistic images are so packed with information, it would be wrong to begin to start playing with them, you know, and, and, and in, you know, manipulating them. Um, this photograph is uh, a photograph of um, uh, a second line. There's a group, there's, in, in New Orleans, they have these parades. They're small, and mm -hmm. they're unique to the community, but they're called second line parades. And so they range very various groups of people. This is a group of women that were uh -huh. in that. Oh, this really is a great work. So, uh, and they're part. The I'm sorry, and they're part of a group called the uh, Zulu. Oh, the the Zulus. That's p Zulus. I've also photographed Zulus, and we may have passed some of those photos. This picture I love. <laughs> as far as subculture, this uh -huh. this picture I love because there's a there are two main groups. Uh, even in New York and in New Orleans, uh -huh. they, they are against gays, they're against um, anything that is not conservative. So in the streets, so I want you to just they see don't the- look conservative at all. But in the, if you see the, the, the pic, the, what's behind, Oh, so the Homo group sex behind them is, is a different group. It's uh -huh. totally, they're actually- Okay, no, right. that's a story on itself. Like the women in the front, they're gay women, and they're marching in the street, and then this mm -hmm. group comes behind them, sex is sin, you know, and they're, but they're all in one spot, which is well, that's why quite interesting. The speech. All right, so we're coming to the end of uh, our discussion. We will have a few minutes to talk about your plans for the future. I'm pretty sure you have a few interesting projects that are coming mm -hmm. into making some. Mm -hmm. All right, time flies pretty quick, and uh, we almost uh, finished here. Before uh, we will go to the final minutes of our show, I just wanted uh, to take a look at a few images uh, right. Lisa brought with her. Uh, we was talking about portraits, and definitely faces on those portraits would be something that uh, a lot of well, these are us would I know. brought these older ones, and and I didn't put them on the digital screen uh -huh. because these. Um, this is a photograph that I took of Lena Horn, who's not with us any longer, but uh -huh. she's ex very, I mean, everyone knows who Lena Horn is, just uh -huh. about. And this was at her birthday party. So uh -huh. at the time, I was in the 80s. I was photographing for the Black American News and a couple uh -huh. of other publications, the Village Voice, and they sent me on that assignment to photograph her, her birthday party. 
That's Lena Horne. That's a really inspired photo. This is wow. a photograph. I was in the Morocco. There was a club here called Morocco Club. Mm -hmm. And I was there, and I was very young, actually. So I, I wasn't even, like, Andy Warhol was just sort of like Andy Warhol. But somebody said, you know, Andy Warhol's over there. Why don't you go, like, shoot him? So I said, sure. I got up. I went and shot him. And he, I said, can I shoot you? And he just stood really still. Uh -huh. And he just let me photograph him. So I cherish those photographs because yeah. he died not too long after that. Yeah. Um, now, oh, this I'm is a photograph um, of, this has got to be like one of my favorite photographs. That's why I brought it. Um, it instantly became my favorite as well. <laughs> yeah. This, this is the great uh, Bob Marley. And Hello, Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> and a beautiful this is the great walk, Bob really Marley. Inspired walk. And that's an image that I took of him at his very last concert here in New York City. Unfortunately, he died shortly after that. Yeah. And um, I really cherish these photographs. They really beautiful work that really will remain in And all of these were of shot on film uh -huh. and every one of and they were sh and they were printed in the dark room. This is oh. another picture of Bob. It's um, when he uh, in his uh, in his room mm -hmm. before he went on to the concert and oh. That's a picture of him just talking in the room. This is great. So uh, as I understand, this is something to be proud of. And uh, you, as you said before, you just can't stop yourself from trying something I new. I can't what, stop myself. What do you have in making? I, well, I just I told you sculpture was the only thing I hadn't done. And I just bought a bunch of clay because I have to do something. <laughs> I have to do it. Wow. Well, well, Unexplored territory. <laughs> We'll probably be able to talk about it next time. Okay. I actually wanted to come to the gallery which uh, you're you You're going curating. to come, right? I definitely do. So we'll when we probably come to the gallery, to I'm going to show you month. so many beautiful things. I'm looking X forward gallery to see this. in Harlem. X gallery in Harlem. Come visit. I'm there Thursday, Saturday, and Sundays. Yeah. And uh, that was single shot. The Manhattan Neighborhood Network Roundtable, Lisa Duvar with uh, her beautiful walk. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.